objection. Mr. Speaker, House Resolution 1027 provides for consideration of the conference report to accompany H.R. 5515, the John S. McCain National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2019. This NDAA process has once again been a textbook example of how Congress should work. After extensive hearings in the House and the Senate, lengthy committee markups, hundreds of amendments, separate passage in both chambers, and a conference committee, we have reached the point of final passage. This has been a process that has followed regular order and allowed so many members to have a role in the process. Here in the House, that is a testament to Chairman Mac Thornberry, Ranking Member Adam Smith, and their very capable staffs. This is the earliest the House has passed the final version of the NDAA in 41 years, which is a remarkable feat. A considerable amount of time and effort has been put into this product, and I know I joined other members of the House in expressing our deep gratitude for their efforts. This year's NDAA offers the next steps in our effort to rebuild our military and reform the Pentagon. I know many of us have been deeply troubled by the readiness crisis that struck the military over the last several years. This has resulted in training accidents and failures that took the lives of our service members. To reverse that trend, this year's NDAA allows for increased funding for training, as well as $2.8 billion for the procurement of spare airplane parts. In response to recent naval incidents in the Pacific, the NDAA directs the Navy to review their operational chain of command and current training plans for surface warfare officers. The strategy of peace through strength requires us to continue to produce and procure the best tools and resources possible. In an effort to build toward President Trump's goal of a 355-ship Navy fleet, the NDAA authorizes the construction of new ships, including a Ford-class aircraft carrier, additional Virginia-class attack submarines, and three littoral combat ships. Given the range of challenges in the nuclear domain, the NDAA supports the Nuclear Posture Review's recommendation to pursue a lower-yield ballistic missile warhead, while also making important investments in our missile defense programs. Very important, the NDAA authorizes a 2.6% pay raise for our service members which is the highest increase in nine years. This is critical to recruiting and retaining the best and the brightest. Additionally, this NDAA focuses on policy specific to Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran, as well as provisions relating to non-state actors and terrorist organizations. I'm also pleased that the conference report contains a compromised final version of the Foreign Investment Risk Review Modernization Act. Congress has come together in a strong bipartisan manner to recognize the growing threat of countries like China in weaponizing financial investment, threatening our advanced technologies, and undermining our defense industrial base. The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, known as CFIUS, is an interagency body led by the Treasury Department tasked with reviewing foreign investment for national security concerns. However, United States law governing CFIUS has not been modernized for over a decade, and it's not designed to address today's modern, evolving threats. The Foreign Investment Risk Review Modernization Act gives CFIUS much-needed additional authority to address real national security threats without unduly burdening foreign investment in the American economy and slowing American economic growth in the process. I could go on and on about the important reforms and priorities in this legislation, but these should give you an idea of our focus on standing up to our adversaries and supporting our servicemen and women. Mr. Speaker, just this past weekend, I was able to spend time with some of these fine servicemen and women in the Pacific, where they are taking part in the RIMPAC Naval exercise, the largest in the world. It is amazing to see the work these young men and women, some of them very young, what they do on a daily basis. 
whether it's landing planes on an aircraft carrier or steering a massive warship, these individuals are asked to carry out incredibly complicated and dangerous tasks, and they do it exceedingly well. It is the least we can do to show these courageous and patriotic Americans we have their back by passing this NDAA on a strong bipartisan basis. We deal with a lot of complicated and, frankly, divisive issues in this body. But today, on this issue, I hope we can show that our national security and the people who devote so much to keep us safe can rise above the divisiveness of today's politics. Let's pass the NDAA for the 58th straight year and make sure all our servicemen and women know we have their backs. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting House Resolution 1027 and the underlying bill, and I reserve